Because he's preparing us for a new world. That's why you're seeing all this exposure. That's why you're seeing everything. Evil has come to the surface. And as a new creation in Christ Jesus, we will enter that because you and I are new. Only the new enter the new. The old will not. So you can't be one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom. You won't enter the new world. You just won't. You'll have to go through tribulation. Is everybody okay? Romans 8. This is not Disney World. We are seeing the preparation for a new world right now. We are also getting closer and closer to the end of the age of grace. Hallelujah. Romans 8.18 Let's speak it together. For I consider that the suffering of this present time, everyone say present time. That means right now we are hard pressed or suffering. We're seeing all kinds of things going on. Amen. Some people can't even associate with their families because they're Democrats. I mean, they've been, you've been thrown out of your family because you're, <laughs> you're, you vote for righteousness and justice. <laughs> It's amazing during, this, during these holidays, people could even fellowship with their families because they rejected those because they're so filled with evil and hatred and they don't even realize it. It's amazing to me and how many people are still bound by fear. It's incredible. And of course, the media is promoting more fear. Oh, there's going to be a stronger virus and this and that and whatever. Oh, get over the first one. I mean, what the heck? For I consider the suffering, the challenges of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us when in the new world. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Who's that? Us. For the creation was subjected fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. That's future faith. Because the creation itself also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty or freedom of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance, which is endurance. So creation itself was, uh, is going to be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious freedom of the children of God. This is what's happening right now. That's why you're seeing all the corruption being exposed. Amen? Remember, God is sweeping through the whole world. We are still in that second world wind and the first world wind. The first world wind was ripping and tearing and opening. It's, gonna, it's increasing and increasing. It's getting stronger and stronger. The second world wind is coming to release provision and strategy. You will see the wealth of the wicked be turned over to the righteous. Many things are going to change. You've got to understand something. Um, the Antichrist and all of the, what they call deep state, whatever, is preparing and focusing on one world order. The central banks control everything, which is ruled by satanic realm. They're the ones that control everything. They're the ones that hold the finances. They're the ones that create war, and then they finance it. Then they create treaties and peace, and, and then they finance it. They find it. Why? Because the ruler of this world, Satan's kingdom, dang, hangs money over people. So it controls them. 
It puts them in fear. It puts them in doubt. It puts them in bondage, whatever it may, you know, how the enemy utilizes it. That's why the word says that the love of money is an open door to all evilness. Amen? People do great things to get money. And I've said before, there are people that God wants to heal. They won't even seek a healing because they want to stay on disability. Hallelujah. 2 Peter chapter 3. New world. <clears throat> Second Peter chapter three, verse one. Speak it together. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong one. Glory. Uh, hallelujah, that's one. Okay, let's write this again. Second, we're going to go there though, right after this, okay? <laughs> Second Peter chapter 3. Is everybody there? Good. Verse 1. <laughs> Beloved, are we there? Good. I now write to you this second epistle in both of which I stir you, your what? Your pure minds by way of reminder. Well, your pure mind is not your mind. It's the mind of Christ. Hello? That you may be mindful of the words that were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own what? Lusts. Saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, I do not, do not forget this one thing that with the Lord, one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years, one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as the thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of precious of a persons ought to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness will what? Dwell. So again, in this new world that God is preparing, what is going to rule? Righteousness. Amen? Right now, righteousness is not ruling. I can tell you that. But it's slowly taking over in certain areas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And righteousness, therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found in him in peace without spot and blameless. And consider that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, has written to you. As also in all of his epistles, speaking in, in them of these things in which are some things hard to understand or interpret, 
which untaught and unstable people twist to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to him be glory both now and forever and ever. In other words, he's saying scoffers in the last days, they will be influenced by deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. But you and I are to be looking forward to a new world. See, that's what gives us hope. We are looking forward to everything coming new. We're walking away from the old. We know that everything's burning up. Everything's going to go away. We are coming into the new. We're not holding on to the old no more. Amen. We are going into the new. We're a, a, a world that will be ruled by righteousness and justice in Christ. He said, grow in grace. Amen. And position yourself for divine advancement. Everybody should want it to be divinely advanced by God. Not by man. Amen. But by God. Not human carnal or intellectualism. But by God. Amen. By the Spirit of the Lord. Again, in this grace, we talked about this last time. There's areas of grace. There's unmerited, unmerited love. Amen. There's his plan of escape. So the plan of escape from the old world into the new world. Then there's his favor. And you earn his favor. This is all under grace. And then we talked about grace being a delay of his judgment and wrath between revelations. Or what we call between repentances. So again I want to share that grace is constant. Faith is up to you and me. So it's the faith that connects to the grace. So we fall in the categories of one of those four areas of grace. Amen. So it's going to be faith that is going to have to maintain to stay connected. Is everybody with me? Again, grace is always constant until the end of the age of grace. It won't be needed. But faith will waver. We must allow the process of suffering <laughs> and challenges to perfect, amen, to establish, to strengthen and settle us so that we maintain a, a, a constant contact and connection so that you and I access. See, then we advance. When God advances us, he advances us in areas of grace. More favor, more of his plan. Amen. More of his love. All of these areas of advancement and grace. And again, all, there are things that are going to prevent people from entering the new world. Themselves. Sin. He showed us already. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Things that displease God. Compromisers. And 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. So in this process of conversion for me and you, we, he, God is preparing us for a new world. Again, the world doesn't have hope for a new world. Everything they have is in hope for now and in, in, in the present. That's why we move on. That's why Paul said, press forward, continue. Let go of today. Let go of yesterday. Let it go. In verse 1, let's speak it. Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. In other words, those that have obtained or advanced to like precious faith. You know, what is the, the word tells us about hanging around with those who have the same mind, the same mind of Christ. Be careful. Don't associate with people who do not have the same mind of Christ. Be careful. We want to be around those who are, are like precious faith, accessing all the grace of God. Because he says, verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied. 
When you see the word grace, know that there's four levels of that grace. He's saying grace and peace be multiplied, advancement. To you in the knowledge of God in our Lord Jesus Christ. As his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. That's the old world that's passing away. It's dying. Lust causes death, doesn't it? Sin causes death. But after, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Again, those that have obtained an advanced like precious faith, accessing all the grace of God with divine power and divine nature to overcome. To not only overcome, but to outwit your enemy. Amen. You're always a step ahead. Can't touch you. It's when you stop, he catch, you're bumping you each other, you know. Outwit the corruption of the world, preparing for the new world of righteousness. In Revelation 21. You know, you can ask a lot of people, are you ready for a new world? They can say yes, but are you prepared for the new world? There's a lot of people ready, but are they prepared for it? Because some of them are that think they're ready and getting in. Revelation 21, verse 1. Let's speak it. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immoral, Sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in a lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Advancing into the new world by overcoming fear, doubt, unbelief, deception. Things that distract and sway into rebellion, unforgiveness, offense, or bitterness. You know, the enemy's working very hard because he knows his time is short. Very, very hard. That means you got to get closer and closer and stay filled with the presence of God. Amen? If he, uh, Romans 6. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1.
Is everybody there? Let's speak it. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, might be done away with, that means you, you and I must cooperate, might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present, present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under, under what? Grace. He says, reckon yourself dead to the influence of evil distractions, but alive to Christ. Not under the law, but under the plan of escape, which is grace. Under the plan of escape of the corrupt world into the new world. In Ephesians 4. When you hear reckon, it means remembrance, bring to remembrance, constantly keep it activated. Ephesians 4.17. Worthy is your Speak it, this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their thoughts, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart or hardness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work of all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind or your thoughts that you put on the what? The new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who is need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not what? Grieve the Holy Spirit of God by which you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. It says, you know, in, in this, he talks about the deceitful lust that creep into the hearts of God's people, not able to renew the thoughts of the mind of Christ, lacking the Lord's presence, 
to activate the mind of Christ, causing flawed belief systems and flawed perceptions and loss of restraints. I'm going to say that again because it's important. You know, again, I, 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 I get phone calls. It's incredible. And the, the phone calls that I'm getting from people that are struggling, and it's because they don't fellowship. Now, they may fellowship with a believer, but they're not in God's presence, corporate presence. And they struggle hard. And in this, families are being destroyed. People are losing their jobs. People are falling back, going into drugs and alcohol again. Why? Because they're looking for a fulfillment. And so in this, he's t the Lord is telling us, they're not able to activate the mind of Christ lacking the presence of God. And so in this, they pick up flawed belief systems. They pay, and then what happens? Flawed perception. And then loss of restraints of the flesh. Amen? That's where a person is a reactor, not a responder. Emotional. Easily offended. Always thinking people are rejecting them. All of this here is the voice of the stranger in the carnal arena that interferes to prevent an individual from being free. It brings them under bondage again. In Ephesians 5. Is everybody there? Oh, that's good. Praise God. <laughs> In verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who fell asleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because of what? The days are definitely evil. <laughs> Therefore, do not be Unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine which, in which dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and submitting to one another in the fear and reverence to God. In other words, respecting one another. Amen? In other words, expose. Expose these things. You know, so many people are trying to expose everyone else's, but they're not willing to expose themselves. Expose it. In Genesis chapter 6. In verse 1. Genesis 6, 1. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born to them that the sons of God, these are the angels, saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful. And they left their abode and their positions, put on flesh, came into the women. And they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. It's amazing how they skipped this over when you went to catechism or whatever it was in school. I never heard any of this. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> in Catholicism, never, nobody ever talked about any of this stuff, man. <laughs> the Nephilim race. Verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. <clears throat> there were giants on the earth in those days. And also after, when the sons of the angels, sons of God, came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil 
uh, continu e evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man. Man, don't let him get, don't grieve the Lord, man. <laughs> you know. I will destroy man. Now he's merciful. <laughs> Thank you for Jesus. Amen. <laughs> the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I made them. But Noah found, found what? Grace. He found favor. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. In other words, and God gave him a plan of escape. What did he tell him to do? Build a boat. I'm going to flood the earth. I'm going to destroy everything. Why? Because I'm going to send you into a new world. Does everybody get it? See, this is the same process. You will see chaos. You're going to see all kinds of things coming. Because we're entering a new world. This one's going to poop out going to die. It's dying now. The only thing that maintains life here is Christ. Other than that, it's a dead world. It's ruled by death. Amen? He's going to destroy the earth all of all for new. Go to Matthew 24. Again, what gives us this hope is that we are going to a new world. There'll be a time when the Lord's going to say, you don't have to work anymore. Cut the job. Get out of there. What do you want me to do, Lord? I want you to witness everyone out in this block and everyone over here. Why? Because you're coming home soon. There'll be a day where you ain't going to work no more. It's over with. Hallelujah. 24-3. Now as Jesus said in the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming in the what? End of the age of what? Grace. Amen. And Jesus answered and said, take heed that no one deceives you. Again, and again, and again. For many will come in my name, saying I'm a Christian, and deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. Well, we know that now. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, earth, and earthquakes in various places. And these are the beginning of sorrows, which we're almost done with. Then they'll, they will deliver you up to what? Tribulation. And will kill you or attempt to kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. You know that they're really trying to get Christians as labeled as terrorists. They're really trying to do that. The Democratic Party and all of the liberal and all of these parties are trying to get Christians labeled as terrorists. We might be their terrorists. Amen. Praise God. Holy Ghost arsonists. We want to stir fires of God all over the place. That many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. That many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And look at these are just not prophets that are, you know, positions of prophets because the prophecy is of Jesus Christ. The witness of Jesus Christ is called prophecy. So what he's talking about is many Christians are going to be deceived and deceived others. Hallelujah. And verse uh, 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be what? Saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of the desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, 
standing in a holy place. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down and take anything out of this house. Let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. So what's he saying? Listen, man, something heavy is about to happen. But verse 19, but woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babes in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be what? Great tribulation. Such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. So we know that, that in, again, here we are. Another part of the destroying of the earth. Does everybody understand that? Destroying of the old world so that we are entering a what? New world. And unless those days were short, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be what? Shortened. Again, great tri there's tribulation and then there's great tribulation. Each one is three and a half years. Why? To destroy the world again. Remember it was destroyed with the flood? And this here is preparation. Actually, in all of this tribulation... Because I truly believe that admit, before great tribulation, you and I are going to take off. We're going on vacation from this world. And God's going to do all kinds of stuff here. First, he's going to burn it up, clean it up. Then we're coming back with him to clean up the rest of it, probably, for a thousand years. And then the end will come, and he'll end it all and burn it all. Amen. So what's going to happen here? Then you, we got tribulation, you got rapture, then you got great tribulation. Again, the hope is that the rapture will be the greatest sign to all mankind <laughs> so they don't go into great tribulation, so that they would turn and be saved so that they can enter the new world. Revelation 20. Revelation chapter 20. We are getting closer. Closer and closer. So don't quit your job yet, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and don't call us until God told you to quit the job. Because you know what? When, he, when everybody quits, we know we heard. Amen? <laughs> He's good. Verse 1. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years were finished. So he's going to have an opportunity for a last final deception. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones... And they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast and his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And I got to remember, this is, these are tribulation saints. <clears throat> these are individuals, now remember this. These are individuals who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior as during tribulation. Amen? During great tribulation. I don't think you're going to see all of this as much in the beginning of tribulation. I really believe that the first three and a half years of tribulation will be a gradual, like what you're seeing right now. It's a gradual decline of things. A grad But see, we're going to see a sweep of righteousness. Then we're going to see a sweep of unrighteousness. It's going to come back and begin to gradually take it over again. 
<clears throat> and again, we're not going to see, we're not, I don't believe we're going to leave until the devil goes to Israel and Jerusalem and proclaims himself as God. Once we see that, boom, we're out of here. Of course, there'll be the two prophets on the earth too. And we're going with them. They'll lead us out of here. Praise God. Well, they got, you know, special map. Verse and, and so uh, uh, verse 4 again, and I saw the thrones and they that sat on them and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded <clears throat> for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God who had not worshipped the beast of his, or his image and have not received this mark on their foreheads or on their hands. Of course, the image of the beast has not been released yet, has it? Amen. Although people think, you know, certain things. They lived and they reigned with Christ for what? A thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is, the sand, is, the, is in the sand of the sea. They went up on the, what? on the breath of the earth. So they came from where? Beneath. And surrounded the camp of the saints, which would be the holy city. And the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire. And brimstone were the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and, and him who sat on it. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was no place for them. And I saw the dead and small and great standing before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. So the books that were first open were called the books of remembrance. <clears throat> then there was the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. <clears throat> the sea gave up the dead who were in it, death and Hades, delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So our great encouragement and hope is reaching a new world. Amen? And I'm going to close at 1 Thessalonians 4. separates us from the world. We know we're not a part of this world. Amen? We're moving on. We're moving on up. <laughs> and it ain't to the east side. <laughs> First Thessalonians chapter 4. I don't think there's any drying cleaners in heaven. First Thessalonians, Thessalonians 4 1. Let's speak it. Finally, then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and in honor, not in passion of loss, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of or defraud his brother in this matter, 
because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for your yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you do so toward all brethren who are in uh, Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life. Mind your own beeswax. And work your own salvation out with your hands. <laughs> work with your own hands as we commanded you. That you may walk properly toward those who are outside, that you may lack nothing. But I don't want you to be an idiot or ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who are asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. In other words, graves will open. All kinds of things are going to happen. Just like when Jesus rose from the dead, what happened? The place shook, man. People came out of their graves and went into the cities. Only those who were saved during Jesus' ministry got up. And so the dead will rise first. I'm hoping we're able to see it because, you know, it's going to be quick. I want to see that. <laughs> Yo! Told ya! <laughs> Bye! <laughs> You can have my sneakers right now. <laughs> I'll leave you a prayer booklet and sneakers. Praise God. <laughs> Verse 17. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up or raptured together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Amen. Remember, man. <laughs> Or God is preparing us for the new world. Not new world order. Hello? For a new world. Once that new world order takes over, we're out of here. Jesus is going to destroy all that. And we're coming back for a thousand year reign. And thank God, we're going to all have a glorified body. Yeah, you can eat cake. No counting calories, you know. Praise God. Glorified body. Healthy, strong. You'll be able to go from earth to home. Earth to home. Because the new Jerusalem won't come down yet. Earth to home. We're still going home. Or that's going to be our home. We'll be able to go back and forth. But we'll be servants of the Lord. We won't think the way we think anymore. <laughs> Hello. There will be no sorrow. For me and you, there will be no sorrow. But for the earth, there still will be for some people. They're going to be quite sorrowful that they missed it. They'll have to go through the process of life and die while we remain alive forever. And they'll have to wait until the cycle ends after a thousand years. But to God be the glory. Listen, look at what's waiting for us. Fret not. Don't let fear stop. Don't let the lust of the world interfere. Do the right thing before God. That's all you need to be concerned about is doing what pleases Him. And He's gonna, everything's going to fall into place. He's not looking at what we've done wrong. If you've put it under the blood, it's over with. Just go forward. Amen? And let God build the house and not us because that's what gets us in trouble. 
Amen. Every time we start building and getting our hands involved. When your hand's in it, his isn't. Amen. So praise God. Let us encourage one another. We pray for one another. We are leaving this world behind. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we thank you for tonight's encouragement. Knowing that we are entering a new world. And that you're preparing us for it. And of course, we're going to see all kinds of stuff happen. Because you're constantly exposing the corruption of this world. And the lust of it. So that we may move forward. And that you would rescue as many people as possible. So Lord, prepare us for wherever you send us. That we may share your love and your rescue. That your name will be glorified in whatever we do. As we abound in all areas of grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.